Well, hello everyone, Dan Herbert, Dan Herbert Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. As you can see, it is still deep, deep winter with lots of snow. But I do have a couple things I can do during the winter when I can't get out there prospecting. And today I have got some smelting to do. So wish me luck and I hope you enjoy. Now, a friend of mine, Mark, hi Mark, uh, he bought an estate sale of a rock collector, bought everything in the whole estate. In that collection, the collector had a bunch of drawers in a little container that were labeled gold and a couple of bottles labeled gold. When we opened up those bottles and the containers and looked at them, it didn't look like gold. It looked like a pyrite. It looked like um, ore samples from maybe a gold mine. Uh, when we started picking through it, we couldn't see anything in it that was actually, you know, definitely gold. But the samples were labeled gold. So we're thinking they might be some high grade ore. We're thinking that they might be something that, you know, if we put a bit of effort into it, we can get a bit of gold out. We don't know. So today I am gonna take all that material and do what I can to see what it has for gold. I also have a bunch of scrap silver I'm gonna melt down and make a little ingot out of. And I've got some sweepings out of an old jewelry shop uh, where he was cutting all of his gold into the bottom that I think we can probably smell melt down and get some good gold out of. That's the plan for today. Let's get to it. Well, there it is. There's all of the material that was in, you know, those four little bins there, all labeled gold in this guy's collection. So we don't know what's actually in here. Nothing in what I see screams, you know, real gold. Lots of pyrites, lots of kelp pyrites, lots of iron pyrites, lots of pyrite, but nothing screaming gold to me. Now, of course, gold can get locked up in pyrites, absolutely. So let's crush it all down, smelt it out, and see what we actually find. Now today I will be using my modified Cobra Crusher here. I've added a new plate with a chute, you know, goes down into a gold pan. Just a little tiny impact mill or flail mill. There's a little flail that spins around inside here and beats the rocks to pulp. When they're small enough to get through the screen that's in there, they come out into the pan. Now, I typically don't use this thing indoors. It creates a lot of dust, but you know, it's winter outside. So I'll throw my dust mask on and see if I can crush this material down to a powder. Still looks like pyrite to me. Let's crush it. And there it is, all crushed down into a fine, fine, fine powder. So for today's smelt, we will be using the KK12, that's the Quick Kiln 12 uh, smelting furnace. I also have their little capelli furnace up there that we'll be using later. Right now, it's just warming up slowly because everything out here was sort of uh, cold and moist, damp, you know. I'm heating it up very slowly in case it had any moisture inside. I need to drive it off slowly. I have my sample here, all ready to go. It is way too big, way too big to do all at once. So I'm just gonna do a 30 gram sample to start with. Using Legend's uh, High Letharge Flux. I'm not gonna get into the flux details today. We just wanna see what the gold is. I'm using this flux just because they say this is the flux for very difficult or unknown samples, and that's gonna be a difficult or unknown sample for sure. And again, if you wanna know more about smelting, what fluxes to use, how to do it all, I've got lots of videos back on my channel. Go check those out. Or of course, check out Jason from Mount Baker Mining and Metals. He's got great smelting videos. Today, we're just doing it. We're not gonna explain all the nitty gritties. We're just gonna go get the gold or see if there's any gold in that sample. And I'm going to smelt 30 grams of this ore today. Let's see what kind of bead I get off it to start with. Then we'll decide what we do with the rest. There we go, 30 grams. Now we are gonna go overkill on the flux today because I wanna make sure 
we're not doing a fire assay. We're not getting exact precise amounts here. So I am making sure there's enough flux to take up everything in there. Typically, if you're doing a fire assay, you'd be measuring this stuff very carefully and having a certain amount of flux going in. So you had a certain size uh, lead prill, but I just want to see what the gold's in there. So I'm just gonna go overkill on the flux. There we go. And see what shows up. Mix it all in nicely. I'm also gonna leave this, ooh, careful. I'm gonna leave this in the smelt a lot longer than, you know, maybe typical to make sure that chemical reaction has time to do what it needs to do. There we go. And that looks to be warm inside. We can start loading the charge. I'm using a brand new crucible today. Outdoors so we don't breathe that nastiness. And let's see what happens. my recipes for flux I put the flux in for a 15 gram sample not a 30 gram sample so I'm just gonna shut things down and you know double things okay back at it glad I double checked my work and yes I do have the respirator over there for when I'm working over top of it once it starts melting and stuff I don't want any of that fumes getting into my lungs or anything like that and while it's cooking even though it's outdoors and has hundred percent ventilation I'm not going to stick around it. I'm going to go and hang out on the porch and read a book or something. Well, it goes. I want it in there for 20 to 25 minutes. I want a nice long smelt to let it do its thing the best it can. It's been going for, you know, 18, 19 minutes now. Time to turn it up and get it to its target temperature. I'll leave it for six more minutes at, higher, at a higher, you know, heat rate. And by then, it should be up to its target temperature, and I can pour. Heating up the cone mold. Gotta tuck the beard in, too! There we go. And it looks like we're ready to go! I'm definitely out of practice. A couple things wrong there for sure. I see white all around this, meaning there is sulfur left in there. I probably should have roasted that ore beforehand. Uh, not enough flux, should have roasted it, something. The white around there is telling me there's still some sulfur sort of uh, in the mix. We'll see what it comes out as, we'll see what kind of pearl I get in a second. Uh, also, I poured it a bit fast and it spit out that one side. Uh, mm, I will get better, I will get better. It's been a long time since I've smelted on my own. Your note. There we go. <laughs> well, let's see what comes out of it. We have lots of ore to still play with and lots of time to do more smelts. I think while I let that cool, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the silver into the crucible, just with borax, nothing but borax, melt that down and cast myself a little silver bar out of this scrap silver. And while that's melting, maybe I will uh, roast the next sample roast it, get rid of some of the sulfur off of it before I try to smelt it again. Okay, my scrap silver and borax mix. I put a bit of silica sand in it as well, just to protect the crucible. Borax is very, very hard on a crucible, though this will be a quick one because all I have to do is melt it. I don't have to smelt it. Okay, to roast 30 grams more. Now I'm very thankful we are outside. <laughs> that gives off the worst possible smell. 
As you roast an ore, it drives off the sulfides, oxidizes sulfide, gives off sulfur dioxide gas. It's nasty. So I'm just gonna go away for a while and let that do its thing. I'm choosing not to work up on my workbench because it's stinky over there. So this silvery stuff that's breaking on the top layer, that's matte. That is a iron sulfide layer that didn't get absorbed into the smelt. You don't want a big layer of matte. I end up with, looks like about an eighth inch of matte on the top. Should have, should have roasted it, absolutely. But there is my lead prill. A little bit bigger than I would have liked but I put a lot of flux in, so that's kind of expected. And let's see what happened in this second one. This should just all be flux. Oh no, we got a bit of lead down there too. Okay. Only some of the lead came out the first one. A little bead for the second one. I will definitely be able to compel both of those and see what they have for gold. So I got rid of the roasting material there so that I could come in here and pour this silver. I'm just heating up my little bar mold. I don't have enough to fill up this bar mold of silver in there for sure, but hopefully I'll make a layer on the bottom. Smelting under this tin roof, the ice and snow on top is melting really quickly. And look at that, it's starting to even slide off. How cool is that? I don't know if I really want to be standing here. <laughs> bar of silver. <laughs> I'll play with that a little bit more and clean it up, make it look nice, but that's it. One bar of silver. And we have the first coupel in the coupelling furnace here, heating up. It's just a small little um, prill in there, so uh, I had a coupel that had just the tiniest amount of uh, usage on it, uh, so I just reused that one, which again, you're not supposed to do, but hey, we're just having fun here. And uh, let's get that heating up a quick bit quicker. Put the lid on it for a few minutes. And we will have a bead of gold before you know it. Let's hope. Now, ore sample two here has been partially roasted. I say partially because I would have liked to have left it on longer, but uh, I have to get back over here and I can't be around while that's roasting. The fumes are just too awful. So partly roasted, drove off some of the sulfur. Hopefully the flux will do the rest. Now here's the roasted load with its flux all mixed in. I didn't want quite as big of a prill this time as I got last time. I got a pretty darn big prill. So a tiny bit of an oxidizer in there to counteract the uh, flour. That flux that I'm using, that pre-mixed flux, has flour added into it already, pre-added, so that it will reduce the metal oxides in there into metal. The lead oxide gets reduced into pure lead but i didn't want quite as much reduced so i put a bit of an oxidizer in there to counteract a little bit of the flour that's in the flux to start with again so all having fun all experimenting let's see what happens and it looks like the coupel is doing its job and just warming up a few things uh for future use here got my next coupel just warming up the brand new coupel warming it up a little bit so that when i put the prill in it's a bit quicker uh i've got a little crucible here that i'm going to be melting some gold in later and just getting a new layer of borax on it because it was in pretty ugly shape and of course the cone mold for the next pour. you may have heard me say a second ago that i was doing a melt not a smelt so here we are with geology lesson of the day, although this one isn't geology. Anyhow, a smelt is a very complex chemical reaction that happens in molten metals, molten chemicals. A melt is a physical reaction or a physical state change, which is just taking something from a solid to a liquid. No chemical changes at all. Smelting is what gets microscopic gold out of minerals that it's locked up in. 
melting just takes particles of gold and combines them together. Today, we are doing both. Now there is a big misconception about cupelling. Uh, what we're doing there is we're getting rid of the lead that was in that prill, leaving just the precious metals behind. Now the lead is not vaporizing, it is not, it is not going up into the air. What's happening is the lead is reacting with the oxygen in the air, turning it back into lead oxide. That's what was in the flux to start with. Turn it back into lead oxide and the cupel, that little crucible thing that it's on, absorbs the lead oxide. In the end, the lead ends up captured in the cupel. It's not going up into the air. So a lot of people are worried that I'm vaporizing a whole lot of lead. No, no, it's actually capturing it in a very safe way. And if you do see any smoke coming off it, that's that matte phase, that's iron sulfite, uh, sulfide, sulfate, sulfide, iron with sulfur in it. And it's giving off some of the sulfur dioxide right now. That's what the smoke is. Something else you don't want to breathe. Looks like we're ready to go for round two. Let me get suited up and get going. Okay, here we go. I forgot to get the camera back on the pour, but oh well. Uh, what I tried to do is get half the lead in each. I don't know how successful I was, but I'd rather have two smaller pills than one big one when it comes time to cupel them. So, hopefully I was successful with that. And uh, that white around there was from before. If you notice this one, I had burned off almost all the white. I didn't get any new white this time. So I think I did a much better job of getting the sulfur out of this one. Okay, what's next? Well, the first cupel is done. I get my first glimpse to see what might be in that ore. Okay, we're not gonna talk about what happened to that first cupel. All my fault, I take full responsibility. Let's see what's in the second one. <laughs> okay, luckily, most of the material was in the second <laughs> prill. Let's get that in there and melting down. I know, there'll be a million questions. I'm not going to admit to it, other than it was my fault. Alrighty, next on the agenda is some sweepings we have here from a jewelry shop, well, a artisan who makes gold jewelry. This is the stuff that he files off his jewelry, uh, you know, his bench sweepings. It will have gold in it, but it'll have all sorts of other things as well. So we're gonna make a very simple, small charge of flux in there. I could probably get away with melting it rather than smelting it, but I wanna make sure that if there was anything, you know, untowards in there, it gets absorbed in the flux as well. So very small load, little bit of flux. We will get a lead prill that will cupel out very quickly because it'll all be very small and probably mostly gold. These will be cool enough by now. Maybe they're not cool enough yet. Ooh. I think I heated that thing up more than usual. It is freaking hot. Maybe try again. One out. There's two. Much cleaner looking pores. Much cleaner looking. It'll be interesting to see how much lead came out. See if my adding a little bit of oxidizer helped. Flattening the lead. Flux. Oh yeah, it's looking better. My extra efforts to split the lead evenly between the two was a total failure. That's how much came out the one, and that's how much came out the other. So what I'll do is I'll just melt these down and pour them in separately so I, that's too much for my size cupels. I have to break it down into two. Okie dokie, okie dokie, okie dokie, why not? Okie dokie. The gold should be ready to go. Let's get the camera on the pour this time.
That was a thick flux. And the nice thing about gold is it hardens instantly. I can knock that out right now. Correction for the last clip. That will actually be lead in there because it was a smelt. So it's gonna be a lead gold mix. I do need to leave it sit for a sec. There she is. Just tried recasting the silver to see if we get a better bar. I think I got a worse bar. <laughs> oh well, it's still all one big chunk. I need a bar mold that's halfway between that big one and my little guys, because I don't think my little guys would take that much silver, but it's way too much for a big guy. Since I am done my smelting for today, I will save the rest of that for sort of, well, once I figure out what I have in the, I will save it in case I want to smelt the rest of it. But I'm done my smelting for today. In there should be uh, the gold bead from that smelt, from that ore. Uh, there's my silver right there. Uh, I'm using the big kiln because I can, why not, to uh, cupel the gold. So that bead there, or that prill that's heating up is the gold. I've never used the big kiln before to cupel anything. I don't know if enough oxygen's getting down inside. I probably actually take off the next ring. Give it as much chance as possible to get ox oxygen inside to oxidize the lead so the cupel can absorb it. But there we go. Silver, gold, and unknown. Let's hope there's a gold bead in there. So using the smelting furnace to cupel in definitely was not working. One of the key components for a cupelling furnace is that it lets air down over top of the molten lead. And here it just was not letting the air in. It would stay there molten forever and was not oxidizing on the surface. So I will wait until that one's done to throw that in there. That is definitely my bottleneck. I need one of those electric uh, kilns like Jason has so I can put multiples in at once rather than just one at a time. And that's pretty slow. What a beautiful day out in the wilderness in the snow. While I was waiting, I split up that one big pearl into two, though I don't think I'm gonna get a chance to cupel them today because I still wanna get that gold done. And that's taking forever. I just put a lid on the cupel furnace to sort of force that one that's inside there to get a little hotter, speed it up a bit. Yeah. Take that lid off, let it oxidize. So it looks like it's done, but I don't know what I have in there. There is something in the bottom, but it's not looking like a gold bead. Curiouser and curiouser. Go let cool, then have a look at it. Might even throw it in a crucible and just hit it with a torch and see what happens. The gold is now in there though. We will definitely see a good gold bead by the end of the day. So there's the bead from the gold ore, which is microscopic. In other words, that gold ore had almost nothing in it. That was a lot of work for nothing, but it was still fun playing around with smelting. I think the problem I'm having, and I'm having a lot of problems here cupelling. I'm not going to sugarcoat it in any ways. I'm having problems. I think the problem I'm having is I'm not getting enough heat out of those two torches. Whether the propane's just low or too cold out here, it is probably about minus five degrees at the moment. Uh, I don't know what it is. I'm not getting enough heat out of those to cupel properly. And I am just not melting to the degree it needs to melt to oxidize even putting a lid on for you know moments at a time to try to keep some of the heat in it's not working for me so i think i'm gonna have to rethink the uh, cupelling process here to get a good bead for you out of that uh i will get something to show you i promise i'll get something to show you for the end of this video i may have to come back here tomorrow and work it out though so the gold one stopped working like it was supposed to and i thought i was doing something wrong until I pulled it out and found it was hard, but was still way too hot. So I think I just ended up with a lot more gold than I expected. I'm gonna have to pull, break that out of there and just throw it in a crucible and melt it for a second and see what I actually have. So after a bunch more playing around, I finally got myself my gold bead. I had to smelt it one more time without a collector metal this time, and there it is still in the flux. But I can get it out of that pretty easily.
And for now, rather than a terrible looking bar, I've just put the silver into a cone, into the cone mold. And when I get enough to make a really nice bar, I will cast it into a good bar. And the gold comes out to 2.5 grams. This tested out to be 14 karat gold. And that would be about right for the jewelry manufacturer that gave it to me. And at 14 karat, that would be 87.90 for. And at 14 karat, today's gold values, that would be 87.90 US dollars. Two and a half grams of gold. And I had to pull out the bigger scale for the big chunk of sterling silver. And this comes out to. 55.6 grams of sterling silver. Again, when I get enough, I'll make a really nice sterling bar out of that. And at today's prices, that much silver is worth about 39, I think. And we can't forget the little tiny, tiny, tiny bead. It comes out to 0 0.003 grams, which today's gold prices is pretty much frickin' nothing. And actually, if you calculate it out, that's actually 18 cents worth of gold, if that's gold at all. But there's the results from a fun day worth of smelting with the smelting furnace. Well, everyone, I had so much fun there smelting and playing around with the smelting furnace and everything. I know the results weren't as good as I was hoping, or it didn't go as smooth as I wanted, but it gave me an excuse to get outside and start playing with gold once again. Hopefully this winter is over before you know it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me that thumbs up. If I haven't earned your subscription yet, I hope I earned your subscription today. And a big thanks to everyone for watching, especially my patrons. Because of the support of my patrons, I get to make these weekly episodes of Dan Hurt Prospecting. Hope you're all having a great day. And until the next one, bye.